to St. Mark United Methodist Church in Hamilton, New Jersey. As we gather for worship this day via Facebook Live and YouTube. It is our prayer that you and your loved ones are well and uh, taking care of one another during this pandemic. We seek to provide virtual worship at 10 a.m. every Sunday as long as we cannot worship together physically. We encourage you to join us on the hymns and praise songs, the unison prayer, and make this truly a worship experience for all of us. Special thanks to Sharon, Bill, Becky, Meg, and Bud, who lead us in worship this day and make this online presence possible. Welcome as we prepare our hearts for worship. And now, wherever you are, we would invite you to stand for our call to worship. God is life. But death runs swift. Believe in the resurrection. But death seems more certain. Christ is the resurrection and the life. We want to believe. Those who live and believe in Christ will never die. We have come to find faith in the Lord of life. Please join together in the singing of the hymn, In His Time. I'm 
life to follow everything I believe in. Now I Hear the good news. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And now we join together in that prayer which Jesus taught disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face unwrapped in on the cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Okay, I confess, I am not a patient person. Although I don't think I'm alone in that, I think all of us have difficulty waiting. Story is told of a monk who was terribly impatient. The more he tried, the more impatient he became. So he decided he had to get away by himself to work on this quality. He built himself a cabin deep in the woods. Years later, a man traveling in the woods came upon the monk. The man was amazed to find this religious so far off the grid by himself. The monk admitted that he was trying to learn patience. The traveler asked him, just how long have you been out here? Seven years, replied the monk. Stunned, the traveler asked, but if there is no one around you to bother you, how will you know when you become patient? Annoyed, the monk replied, get out of here. I don't have time for this. We don't like to wait, particularly when we call someone to help. When the cable repair person gives you a four-hour window before they're showing up. The plumber promises to get there today, tomorrow, next week. When the appliance delivery company promises to deliver your package on the next day that doesn't end with why. Or when we're ready to escape quarantine from those who we love the most, yet are driving us insane. Everyone needs to wait for things that we need or things that we want. Tony Evans cites statistics that the average person waits for at least one hour a day. Now this might be waiting at a traffic light, it might be waiting for an elevator, it might be waiting for a parking spot at ShopRite, waiting for a shopping cart at ShopRite, standing in the lines at ShopRite. You can tell I prefer acting. <laughs> I know that patience is a fruit of the Spirit, but a pomegranate is also a fruit, a 
It doesn't help it getting it down. The gospel lesson this morning begins with Jesus receiving the ancient equivalent of a text message from his friends Mary, Martha, and Lazarus of Bethany. The message simply was that they were in need. Dr. Jesus diagnoses that this illness will not lead to death, but is meant to glorify God and demonstrate that Jesus is the one sent by God. So despite his friendship for Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, Jesus stays two days in the place where Jesus was. Now, we are left to wonder and admittedly speculate. What was so important that Jesus postponed the trip to Bethany for two days? Was he making sure that Lazarus was good and dead? Was he binging on a law and order marathon? Was he working on a sermon? Or did he have a couple hundred people outside waiting to be healed? I mean, first come, first serve. Lazarus, take a number and get in line. Don't we define a friend, as one who will drop whatever they're doing to come to our aid. Yet Jesus waits two days before gathering his disciples and heading off to Bethany. The Greek word here tells us that Jesus tarried for two days. Jesus doesn't just get caught up in an un Avoidable situation, an emergency he didn't foresee. Jesus intentionally drags his feet. He intentionally tarries. What is it that's holding Jesus up? The Gospel writer John does not think it's important enough to tell us. But you can imagine with me how Mary and Martha felt when Jesus, taking his own sweet time, arrives on the fourth day. I mean, the first day he was told, he hung around for two more days, and on this fourth day, he comes to Bethany. By this time, Lazarus has died and been buried. Grief is palpable and overwhelming as Family and friends weep and wail at the loss of their brother, their friend. Martha and later Mary say the same thing to Jesus. If only you had been here, our brother would not have died. Now, if you think about it, this statement is both an accusation as well as a statement of faith. In this statement, they express their disappointment in Jesus' late arrival. Yet at the same time, they express their faith that they believe that Jesus could have made a difference. Now, I've visited many deathbeds, but never has anyone said to me, Bob, if only you had been here, our brother, our sister would not have died. Martha goes even further. She says, but even now, we know that God listens to you. Even now, Jesus, even late, Jesus, even after Four days when the body stinks, Jesus, after four stinking days, even now, you can do something, Lord. And Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. If only you would have been here, Jesus, you could have kept me from that car accident. If only you would have been there, Jesus, you could have saved my marriage. If only you would have been here, Jesus, there would have been no Canova 
regardless. If only Jesus. Instead of Jesus taking the sister's statement as an insult, instead of walking away in a snit, instead of seeking to explain his reasoning or becoming defensive or crying out, do you know who you're talking to? Jesus promises Lazarus will rise again and declares again, I am the resurrection and the life. After speaking with Mary, with tears in his eyes, he calls out for Lazarus to arise and instructs those around him to remove the grave clothes and let him go. As we think in our minds, it's about time, Jesus. The last verse of the scripture passage ends with those who were with Mary seeing what Jesus does and coming to believe. Could it be that this whole account is not so much about the raising of Lazarus, but it's also about the belief of those who saw Lazarus raised? Was this belief part of the two-day delay? God has God's own time that often is not in agreement with our concept of time. Will Willimon tells the story of a mother who approached him as dean of the Duke University chapel. The mother expressed concern that her son was not a Christian. Willimon pointed out that there was one word she was missing in her statement, and that word was yes. Perhaps her son was not a Christian yet. God works in people's lives in God's way and in God's time. Now that doesn't mean we don't struggle with God's sense of timing. But the whole idea of patience is to give space and time for God to be God. So we wait. We wait for our loved ones to open their lives to faith in Christ. We await God's coming to deliver us from that humongous problem in our lives. We wait for the day when we will never hear the phrases social distancing and coronavirus ever again. We wait to be patient until once again we'll gather for worship. We will fill this place. We will experience renewal and revival and even a smidge or more of resurrection. Though we may be tempted to call out to Jesus if only you have been here in faith, we declare, but even now, Lord, in your time, come and deliver us and all your people. Draw us unto yourself and bring resurrection. Why is this gospel story of Lazarus so cherished by the church? In many ways, the rising of Lazarus serves as a bridge between the earthly ministry of Jesus and the events of his betrayal that we call Holy Week. I came across the saying which said, God is never late and rarely early. He's always exactly on time. His time. Yet our hearts cry out. 
It's about time, Jesus. Let us pray. Most gracious and glorious God, we are not patient people. And yet we dare believe that even now you are in our midst, that you are working on our behalf, that you are bringing healing and hope and strength in the midst of a time where, to be very honest, we are running empty. Most gracious God, renew your church. Bless your people. Draw all of us closer to you that in this time of social distancing, we grow closer and closer to the one who has saved us and makes the difference in our lives. Lord, in our hearts, we cry out and pray for those who are dealing with the coronavirus. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. And Lord, we pray for your strength and compassion in their time of need. Lord, we pray for all of those this day who are who need your touch of healing. And as we read in the story of Lazarus, even now we believe that you can make a difference. So gracious God, touch our hearts. Prepare us this day to serve you and to care for others. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. The final hymn is the hymn of promise.
dare you believe the words of Jesus? I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me shall never die. Go forth from this place, celebrating God's presence in your midst and in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the 